there's a lot of uh, questions and arguments about this. And one of the things a lot of people fail to look at is the hand. If you look at the hand, you can actually see that it is made of spe specific bones. You'll also notice that they're not as thick as most people would assume. Now, the first thing people talk about is whether to use these two or these three, the second and third metatarsal, metacarpals or the third, fourth, and fifth metacarpals. Some people say three is stronger than four, two, so that's what they use. Now, one of the things that is a problem, what's happening is you need a straight line. Now, if you look here, if you look at the hitting with these three, you'll notice that the force would go at 90 degree angles from the strike point, which would actually hit all three bones at an angle. Problem with that is that would mean that those bones will be bent, would have bent, which means that uh, they break. Bones do not have a uh, coefficient for bending, they do break. If we look at the two, we'll notice that when we line these up, we have a line that almost goes completely through the bone, meaning that these would actually be a lot harder to break. If we look at it to the side, we will notice that roughly these bones tend to be a little more straight than people would assume. So the force would go through the uh, second and third metacarpals and into the wrist. The other advantage to this is when we go to the form. This is a model which is used to teach anatomy. And what you'll notice is you'll have the radius here, the ulna here. When you punch, the radius crosses over the ulna and so you end up with a fist going across. Let me just one Now, what ends up happening is you can again see the line going straight through the radius and up to the ulna here. When you use the other three, the first thing you'll notice is that there's a space between the ulna and the other joints. So if you're hitting here, there's a big chance of dislocation. Now as people are talking about punching, usually they talk about punching something hard as a skull. And over here, we have a model of the skull. And next to it, we have what they call an exploding skull model. What you can see is all the areas where the skull can actually break. Now, once we look at this, we can see that there's a lot of areas, especially in the face area, where things can break. The top area here will be relatively str strong, not a good place to hit, and there are certain areas on the side which are protected by, by muscle, but if they are hit, they actually can fracture, and that can end up being a really bad liability. The other thing that people have to pay attention to is the mandible. Now, when you look at the shape, you'll notice that it has an arched shape. A lot of people will tell you, punch to the middle here. Now, the problem with that is if it's punch, a direct punch here, the mandible is actually formed in a way where it will not, it will spread the force across the two, the body, and will maintain its shape. There is another problem. If we look at how the skull works, it rotates in this direction like this. So, if we have a punch coming in, a lot of times the front teeth can end up digging into the knuckles, leading to something called fight bite which those of you who are in a micro would know is caused by a lot of strep species, a lot of different ones. So the idea is when you're hitting the skull not to go straight into the uh, mental protuberance, this area here, but rather go at an angle. The advantage of the angle is it actually coming up here, you'll notice that an angle will actually cause the head to rotate and go up. In this case it's stuck, but you can see the rotation. What that means is you won't get teeth biting you in the knuckles. Now, like I said, there are areas that you don't want to hit. There are uh, for liabilities. There also, you do want to avoid the teeth area because getting hit here can cause the teeth to go into your bone, which will end up leading to an infection. And the other problem is you don't know what this guy would have. If he has anything like uh, hepatitis C, and your knuckle gets cut because it went through, went through, cut and breaking through his lip, you would end up having that bacteria, and that virus, in your hand. And so, by looking at the skull, we can see why certain angles are not a good idea to hit, especially here. A lot of people who tell you to punch here usually wear gloves. 
The advantage of gloves is when the head does come down, you don't get hit. It's a glove that gets hit.